Do-do. Perfect. Um, well, just like anything else, guys, solve for it. So you could use a square root method, or you could use difference of two squares. I'm just going to use the square root method. Not going to make the same mistake the other group did. Going to use plus or minus, though, right? Got to make sure you include that plus or minus. Yes? Yes. OK. Now, what does cosecant equal? Now, here's something that I didn't introduce before to you guys, because I wanted you to have more practice with your identities, right? Cosecant is 1 over y based on the unit circle. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Which is a little bit kind of too much, I think, to think about. So one thing we could also think about, let's look at this as, as identities. Like, there's a couple ways you guys can do this. Wouldn't you guys agree that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine? So I could just replace cosecant with 1 over sine? No? Yeah? You guys OK with that? Yeah. I mean, it was written on the board just not too long ago. Cosecant equals 1 over sine. And then. If you solve for sine of x, you get 1 equals plus or minus 2 sine of x. And then divide by plus or minus 2. And you get plus or minus 1 half equals sine of x. That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it. Cosecant is of x is 1 over y. Sine of x is y over 1. Or opposite over hypotenuse, hypotenuse over opposite, right? Same thing, doesn't matter. So if cosecant is 2 over plus or minus 2 over 1, then that means sine is going to be plus or minus. You just flip it, right? Which would be 1 half. Does that make sense? Right? They're just reciprocals of each other. So what the, why this is so important is I, can, I now feel comfortable giving you guys secant, giving you guys cotangent, because you guys do the same process, but just use the reciprocal function to help you solve. Does that make sense? So this, I know, is the same thing as plus or minus 1 half. Now I just got to figure out what are the angles then that make that true. So we go back to our unit circle. And I say sine of x is equal to 1 half. That is for, I know pi over 6 works, right? That was square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So if pi over 6 works, that means all the same reference angle. This one has to work, which would be 5 pi over 6. So we have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Then we have pi over 6 over, which would be 7 pi over 6. And then we have pi over 6 short of 2 pi, which is 11 pi over 6. Now if I asked you to find all the solutions, you don't want to find the solutions by looking on your phone. What you want to do is find all the solutions by looking at, do, do these have, are these equal distance away from each other? Remember we did some of those that were, I think the one over there it was like equal distance. And you guys can see these aren't equal distance from each other. You can't add something to pi over 6 to get 5 over 6, and then you keep on adding that, and you're always going to get the same answer. So what I notice is I have a relationship between these two answers. Wouldn't you guys agree that those are how far away from each other? So if I wanted to find all the solutions, I would just take theta equals pi over 6 plus pi n. Because when I take pi over 6, if I add pi, I get 7 pi over 6. Add it again, or subtract it, whatever. There. And then if I, you notice that these two have a relationship as well. So theta equals 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. That is all of the solutions. B. B is find all the solutions between 0 to 2 pi. Well, that's not too bad. That's just all of them that are on the unit circle, right? Plus and minus. So that's pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And then C is what are all the angles between 0 and 2 pi? Do we have a solution there? Do we have a? A solution that's within that quadrant? Yes, but we have to find the angle then that fits our restriction between 0 and pi, 0 and negative pi halves. So the angle that fits that, fits that is negative pi over 6. So theta equals negative pi over 6. There you go.
guys, I need 